So this is how treatment works. Um, what we want you to do is to kind of follow along, and some of you may be familiar with this uh, before if you've ever taken a psychology, psychology class in high school or college. Uh, they may have covered, uh, or if you've been through treatment before, they may have covered Johari window. Anyone know where the term Johari came from? Okay, it's two guys by the name of Joe and Harry got together and they came up with this. Uh, but basically what it is is an explanation uh, about who you are as a person. And the idea is that this is your window and everything about you goes into one of these four boxes. Uh, so we're going to talk about not just what this, what this is, but how it applies to you in terms of what we expect from you during treatment and then uh, ultimately what you should expect as well from us during your time here. Uh, so uh, to start with, we're going to try to name the windows, talk about what they are, how they apply to you, and then we'll talk about what to expect from treatment. So what should we call this first window here? Things that are known to you and to others about you. These are things that you would be open with. So it was called an open window. So to illustrate the point here, uh, what I'd like to do is, what do you all know about me? Okay, to show you what's in my open window with you all as others. What do you all? What do you, what do you all know? Oh, you're a drug counselor. I'm a drug and alcohol counselor. Okay, absolutely. What else do you know? You now lock your car doors. <laughs> I now lock my car doors because my car was. Um, um, not even broken into because it was unlocked. Someone took my wallet out of my car. Okay. Uh, so I locked my car doors. Okay? And you know that. Why? How do you know that? Because you told us the story. Because I told you the story about it. right? So it's through me opening up that you get to know what's in my open window. What else do you know about me? You have a son. I have a son. Right? Another thing that I shared with you. Okay? Anything that I haven't shared with you. You're new tonight. What, what do you know about me just having met me? Uh, talkative. I don't know. I'm talkative. Okay, I like to hear myself talk. That's right. Okay? Nothing wrong with pontification. And, right, and I videotape myself right. nonetheless, That's right? right. Like, so I like to see myself talk. Okay. Okay? Uh, I like to believe others like to hear me talk. Okay. Um, uh, how about this? I wear glasses. You wear glasses. Okay. I'm about five foot, eight, nine, eleven, twelve. Ish, yeah, you know. Um, uh, so I'm of average height. I have brown hair. A um, uh, kid today came up to me and said, I have cowboy shoes on. Okay. Right? I mean, th there's certain things we can see about other people, and, and, and that's in our open window. Okay? Um, so <clears throat> how large do you think the open window tends to be for people in substance abuse treatment, especially at the beginning? Very small. It tends to be pretty small. And if you have to think back, think back to when you had like your first ever drug and alcohol evaluation and how honest you were there, it tends to tell you this will be a small window. Okay. Now, in order, in order to have, say, a healthy lifestyle, how big should this window be, ideally? A healthy lifestyle, I suppose, very large. I mean, it yeah. should be wide yep. open. Right. Um, we don't necessarily want everything to be in the open, but um, let's put it this way, as large as possible. Or maybe practical is a better word. As large as is practical for a uh, given situation. Okay. Alright, so let's move on. Uh, let's go down uh, to the... Um, Known to self, unknown to others. What should we call this window? Okay. Things I know about me, but you all do not know about me. Personal. Personal. Okay. You call it personal. Some people like to call it hidden. hidden. I like uh, secret. Okay. Because I like bad Johnny Depp movies. Yeah, the secret window. Okay. I no one's ever seen it because it's bad. I have seen it. It was just on recently, actually. Oh, it was just on recently. That was a waste of your time, wasn't it? It was a bad movie. I love Johnny Depp. That was one of not his best work. It is different. How, how large do you think this window tends to be in substance abuse treatment? Oh, very small. Almost non-existent. You think no secrets? 
Oh no, uh, every secret. I okay, mean, yeah, every secret. Okay, yeah. so this is this is uh, let's call it a humongo. Because okay. I like to make up words, a humongo window. Um, now, just and it's not just in treatment, right? But the whole lifestyle of drug and alcohol uh, abuse required. Like, I don't want people to know how much. I don't want people to know uh, how often, right? I don't want people to know these shameful things that have happened as a result, or the shameful things I've done. So, uh, ultimately, then we want this to be a um, uh, small window, a teeny tiny window. Okay. Now, it's not that you have to share everything with everyone, uh, but there is an idea out there that, that says that uh, in AA, I'll, and I'll give you this as a quote to kind of write in there, um, it says, we are only as sick as our secrets. So the idea is we should be sharing these things with someone. And that, that's a philosophy that's as old as the Old Testament of the Bible. I don't say it because it's religious. I say it because that's how old this concept is. That we should feel comfortable enough with someone in our life basically opening up being 100% real and genuine. Okay? So what do we have to do then? Uh, number one, what, what, do, what do we expect of you in treatment? Number one right here. First thing we expect is for you to uh, to share and okay? to share of yourself. Now, when you share, what's the only type of sharing that's going to do you any good? We ask you to share um. honestly. So that's the first that's the first kind of attitude <clears throat> thing that, that you have to be honest. Uh, I would much rather have someone in treatment share. I don't feel comfortable sharing that right now, then share something that's not genuine, that's not real. Okay? So we ask that you be honest when you share. Okay? That brings things out into the open and that way makes this window larger. What then should we call this window over here? Things that you don't know about you that someone else might know about you. <clears throat> I'll give you. Yeah. I'll give it to you. It's called the blind window. Okay. The blind window. The idea is that psychologically, in our lives, we all have blind spots. It's just like driving in the car. You got that little spot that you hope a motorcycle's not there uh, because you might run them off the road. Uh, how large do you think the the blind window might be? Things that you're not aware of coming into substance abuse treatment. Yeah, let's call it gigantor. Ginormous. Gi ginormous. Oh, that's, a, that's even better. I wish I would have thought of that one. Ginormous window. Um, and uh, to give you some practical implications of, of what this window really symbolizes, how it applies in your life, uh, there, there's an old concept. Uh, for me, it goes back to about third grade when... Uh, it was really funny to tell someone X, Y, Z. You guys know what X, Y, Z means? Mm -hmm. Examine your zipper. Oh. Okay. <laughs> the idea is your, you know, your fly is down. Now, uh, if someone needs to examine their zipper, does that mean that they're trying to go around flashing people? No. No. So why, why would their zipper need to be zipped? They're not aware of it. Right. right? Just not aware of it. Okay. Uh, either not looking for it, can't see it, whatever. Another one. Um, often, uh, you know, if you've got a friend who's got, you know, uh, you might, uh, you, hey, hey, check out the, you know, you got a hanger, okay? Now, hopefully, you know, I don't want anyone to go into craving. This isn't, you know, you got some extra powder hanging out your nose. Uh, uh, but why is it they can't, they don't know they have something going on up there? Can't see that. Because physically, you can't see your nose. So there's some things that we absolutely can't see about ourselves unless other people point them out. And there's other things that we're maybe just not looking for or don't want to see about ourselves that need to be pointed out by others. Okay? Um, and so what we're going to expect of you is that um, you're going to get feedback. Okay? We're going to expect you to receive that feedback. Now, 
The attitude you have to have towards feedback in order for it to be effective would be what? You have to be open. You have to be open to the feedback. Now, does open being open to feedback, does that mean that, that you just accept whatever we say as fact, as truth? Because that's the way it is, because we said it? I mean, no. Okay, what, what does it mean then? What well, you I do? mean, open feedback, take a look at right. it. Let's take right, a look at. absolutely. You take a look at it. So if I say, you know, hey, uh, this, you know, you got a tail, that doesn't mean you have a tail. But if I said it, three other people said it, your mama said it, maybe at some point you take a look and see if you're wagging. You know, it's just. Uh, it happens. So you, that's being open to it. Looking at yourself. Um, so what we want to do with this window, I don't know about you guys, but I don't like being anything, there being anything out there about me that I don't know about. Have you guys ever Googled your own name? Not recently. Not recently? Okay, but you've done it before. Done okay. Before. Right. Right. Why, why would we Google our, because we want to know what's out there about us. Right? Um, and, and the idea is, uh, at least for me, I want this to be non-existent. I don't want to know stuff about me that, that other people. Uh, I don't want there to be stuff about me that other people know and I don't. Uh, actually, Socrates had a saying for this, so I'll give you another saying. He said, the unexamined life. And we know the ending? Is not worth living. Again, that was Socrates. In other words, I need to take a look at myself in order that I can be the best person I can. So that's number two here, right? Being open to feedback. <clears throat> Before we move on to the last window pane there, I want to talk about, in regards to your sharing and, and your receiving feedback, what you can expect from us. Uh, or what you, what you should expect from us uh, as the staff in treatment. When you share, and when you share honestly, what would you like to expect from us as a staff? Respect. Okay, respect. Your honesty. And what was the second one? Your honesty. Honesty, okay. So, not just, so that's going to be like when we're giving you feedback, maybe you want us to be honest. We should be honest. Yeah. With, with the feedback that we give you. Okay. What else would you, do you think you should expect in treatment? Confidentiality. Confidentiality, absolutely. Right. There's a few situations, you know, you guys know about those, uh, that, where we would have to violate your confidentiality. But outside of that, what you say here should be private. We shouldn't be going out and sharing it. As a matter of fact, we can't, right? Confi you know, there's laws that say that's not allowed. What else should you expect that when you share, when you're honest, you like respect it to remain confidential? Be helpful. Okay, helpful. Like with the with the feedback. Yeah, I mean, there's certain ways that you can say things that are. That are oh, helpful. okay. How how we say something? Correct. So you don't want us to be uh, judging you. That could be good. Uh, that that doesn't help anyone when I start, you know, shaming you for what you shared. Correct. When the fact is, it probably took a risk for you to share that. So being non-judgmental. Anything else? Accepting. You know, I'd, I'd certainly hope that, that when you're talking to my staff here and, and uh, myself, they, they would be accepting of you uh, when you do share something. Even if it's something that you're not proud of. Uh, something that you feel shame over, possibly. And that's even more important for us to, to be accepting of. Uh, of you and what you're sharing. I guess that you look, at least look like you're listening when we do share something. Okay, yeah, how about being interested? <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Uh, paying attention to you. What about in terms of the feedback? Any, anything else in terms of when we're sharing our thoughts with you, what would you like, how, how would you expect us to share that? To make it Clear to understand, uh, I guess. Um, simple. Okay. Okay. Not overwhelming. <laughs> okay. Make it simple. Sure. Don't make it too complex. Right? Nay, they, they talk about that. Keep it simple. Right? Uh, how about uh, us being objective? 
Right? You don't need us throwing our opinions out at you. Right? You need our clinical professional judgments that should be objective. Anything else? We, we can add anything else if you think of it. Okay. Alright, let's go on then to the last one. What should we call those things that you don't know about you and no one else knows about you? Let's just call it what it is. It's a no. Freud liked to call this the subconscious. I don't even know what that means. And I'm working on my PhD. It's, okay? it's, it's unknown. We just don't know what's there. Okay? But I can tell you one thing that is there. Um, and that is your future. You don't know what your future holds. We don't know what your future holds. It's the nature of the future. So based on that, how big would this window be? Possibly very large. Okay. Possibly very large. Yeah, or, or I could get hit by a bus walking out the door and it could be very... So, right? It's, it's a no. We really don't know how big it is. But, but I'm going to tell you, there's some things we can do to bring things out. No matter how big it is, there's some things we can do. Number three here, third main task in treatment in terms of what we expect from you. First one, share honestly, be open to feedback. Last one here, we're going to ask you to try new things. And when you try new things, you learn about yourself. What was the last new thing you tried? Any, anything. Exercising. Exercising, okay. Did you learn something about yourself? Absolutely. Okay. Did you like it? Yeah. Okay, you liked it? All right. Uh, yeah, I did, I did. You didn't think you would, right. but you did. Okay. All right. What was the last thing you tried? New. Talking to myself, saying... Ah, daily true. affirmations, I guess. Daily affirmations, trying to build yourself up with your thoughts. Okay. Learning something about yourself as you do it? Oh, yeah. yeah, and then I didn't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, who would have thought something positive came out of talking to yourself? You know, who would have thought? It sounds crazy, but it can be good. Uh, there's one other thing you can do here besides just try new things. You can try old things in a new state of mind. A new mindset, and, I, and I'll give you the give you an example. If you've ever seen the movie, uh, I believe it's called Half Baked. You guys ever seen this movie? It's kind of a stoner classic, uh, so it tells me something about you if you have. But nonetheless, uh, uh, the movie Half Baked, John Stewart from The Daily Show makes a little cameo in there, and he's one of the smokers. They talk about the different types of pot smokers, and he's an experiential smoker, wherein Everything gets amplified and made better when you're under the influence of marijuana. So he comes out and he says, have you ever seen the back of a $20 bill? And he shows it and he says, have you ever seen the back of a $20 bill on weed? Right? That's his famous line in that movie. Uh, and anyways, the idea is it's a totally different experience if you're under the influence of marijuana. And would you guys agree that under the influence of, say, your chemical of choice, that life was a totally different experience? Right? Yeah, I mean, you react to things differently, they have different meaning, and so when we reverse that and we stop using, when we do things clean or sober, it's a totally new experience and you will learn something about yourself. The example I always give is going to a dance. Okay? Have you ever been to a dance completely sober, right? where everyone else was completely sober, and there was actually dancing and moving and... Right? Yeah, well, most people have never done that completely sober. There's always you know, alcohol involved, there's drugs involved, there's both. Okay. Well, you go to AA, they have these things. And I tell you, you might, you might like it, you might not. I guarantee you this, you're going to learn something about yourself when you try these new things. Okay. Substance abuse treatment. Been through treatment before? A couple, two, three times. A couple, two, three times. So here's what I'm going to guess. First time was a different experience than, say, the most recent time. Correct. Okay? Why? I mean, it's the same thing. You're going, you're learning basically the same stuff, They're, you know, doing similar things, but it's a new state of mind. If I want to change, right, it's a different, you know, and so uh, let's say with the behavior of going to AA. For some of you, going to AA by itself is a new experience, and you will learn something about yourself just by going. 
sometimes people have been to AA before and have these like preconceived notions like, I hate AA. That place is stupid. Those I'm people. It's a great program for those people. I love that line. For those people. The people there, they, they go there. But not for me. Right? But see, what happens when people go another, if you go with a more open mindset, a different mindset, you're more likely to, to have a completely different experience. So, we're going to encourage you to try new things, try old things in a new state of mind. What kind of attitude do you have to have in order to be engaging in that? You've got to be willing. You have to be willing. That's correct. So you have to be willing to try new things or try these old things that you, um, you know, are taking a new attitude towards. All right? So when you're willing to try new things, what would you like to expect from us as a staff? To offer okay. options. Yeah, ideas. ideas. How about that? Like, say, hey, why, why don't you try this in that way, and then, you know, just see what happens. Okay. Um, how about this as well? This is at least what we try to do here. You know, I don't know about it, but we try to be non-pushy about it. Present it as an option, right? Not like you have to do this or else, right? Uh, not being pushy about it. Encouraging you. You know, sometimes just just not using is like a new behavior, something maybe I haven't done in a really long time, just being clean. And so whether you're successful or not, I should still be encouraging you. Right? Um, you know, hey, you know, I know you tried to stay clean this week. Uh, you know, it didn't work out. Let's see what we can do a little bit different. Try something else. Okay? But, but not being overly penalizing, oh, I'm going to kick you out of treatment because you got high one time, uh, and then you came in and were honest about it. Yeah, uh, That's not, you know, how we should do things. We should be more encouraging when you try things. Um, anything else? When you're, when you're trying new things, when you're being willing, what would you like to expect from us? I think you have it. I mean, I, I mean, maybe more information if it's needed. Okay, yeah, maybe some information. Okay, that can help encourage you for your behavior, information about it, whatever it might be. What was that? Guidance. Guidance. Patience. Oh, yeah. Patience. Sure. Okay, so in summary, how does treatment work? How you want it to work? Okay. I think as soon as share, someone's got it. Share. You share. Right. Feedback. I share. Feedback. Okay. And try, be willing to try new things. Yeah. So, remain honest. Correct. Open. And willing. willing. H O W is how treatment works. Okay. Remain honest, open, and willing. We're going to try and create the environment. That's my whole job with you. As a counselor, my job is to create an environment in which if you do this, you might end up with, with a totally different outlook on life. You might end up being able to change. Because I don't change people. People change themselves. Okay? I'll, I'll, I'll do the best I can to make sure the environment looks like that. You guys work on these things, and, and, and typically it works out pretty well for people. Okay? And we give us the tools and we have to... I give you the tools, absolutely. Okay? All right, so... What I'd like you to do, go through at the bottom there, and uh, uh, what, two, three questions.